Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar, and this lesson is about how to use inheritance uh, with your class hierarchy. So we're going to talk about what inheritance is and how it's different from using interfaces. Um, we'll talk about what you can and can't do with inherited classes. And then we'll talk about how you can use some special syntax when you're writing the constructors um, in your subclasses. So what's inheritance? Uh, well, when you boil it down, Inherited classes uh, allow you to reuse some of the methods and in a roundabout way the variables of a previous class. And just to clear things up, you're going to see two um, so sets of terminology that mean exactly the same thing. You might see a parent class versus a child class, or you might see a superclass versus a subclass. They both mean exactly the same thing. Parent is the same as superclass child is the same as subclass. Now here are a couple of other um, restrictions that you need to understand. Uh, unlike interfaces, every class can have only one parent that it inherits from, uh, in Java at least, whereas you can inherit from multiple classes. Um, and the big difference for inheritance, this is really important to understand, is that a child class can freely use the methods of its parent but it can't touch the variables of its parent. In order to do that, you have to use a method in the parent class, either an accessor method or a mutator method. So we talked about this a little bit already, but let's just kind of lay things out side by side and talk a little bit more about the difference between your parent class and an interface. Um, interfaces don't have variables in them. They don't actually have an identity, um, whereas a parent class can have variables in it can store values in those variables and you can modify those variables in the child class um, as long as you use methods to do that. An interface doesn't have any code in its methods either. It's just a list of method headers whereas a parent class does have code um, in uh, the methods that it contains. So a parent class is a legitimate class on its own. You can, you can create objects of your parent class. Um, you can use those methods. Um, it has uh, a kind of integrity that an interface doesn't necessarily have. Um, but on the other hand, you can include as many interfaces as you want when you're implementing a child class, but you can only inherit from one parent. So you have to keep that in mind as well. If you need uh, sort of multiple sets of properties to include in your class, you need to do that with interfaces and then figure out which part is the part that includes variables and that's the part that should be your parent. In an interface uh, you have to rewrite code for all of the methods in the interface. Even if you don't plan on doing anything with all those methods you still have to include them with empty curly braces whereas if you're using inheritance you don't have to rewrite any of the methods of your parent. That would be kind of pointless if you just had a child class that did nothing new that's a waste of code, but you know, if your parent class has 10 methods, you can create a child class that only rewrites one of them or only adds one new method and just reuses all of the methods of your parent. Um, that's perfectly okay. Now, as far as the syntax goes, we're familiar with the implements keyword for interfaces. In inheritance, you use the extends keyword. So the syntax here, just like with implements. And by the way, we haven't talked about this yet, but you can do both. There's no reason why you couldn't say public class car extends vehicle implements drivable, comma, washable. Um, you can have interfaces and inheritance in the same class. And then once you've done that, you can add new methods, you can add new variables, you can rewrite old methods, which we'll see in another lesson. Um, you should, at that point, include the code that needs to change the behavior of its parent. And this is something else too. Don't copy and paste the methods from your parent class into your child class. That's a waste of code because you can just use those methods um, just by calling them. But what you should make sure that you do in your parent class is that you have to include any methods that either access class variables or modify those class variables. Because remember, you're not going to be able to access them from your child class directly. As far as what you can and can't do, again, um, if 
you want to reuse one of the methods of your parent class, you just call it. Just pretend that it's there. Um, it's there, but it's invisible. You can just use it as if it was part of the child class to begin with. But again, you can't access the private variables of your parent class. You can't even access the public variables of your private class. Um, that's not what it's for. Um, you should uh, use accessor methods or mutator methods, and we'll see an example of that in a minute. Lastly, let's talk about how to do constructors um, when we're dealing with inheritance. When you're writing your child class, you should still include a constructor, because every good class should have a constructor in it if it has variables in it. But a lot of times, your constructor for your child class needs to also initialize the variables that it inherited from its parent class. And of course, we know you can't do that um, with the assignment operator because you can't access your parent's variables. So in order to do that, Java gives you this special syntax uh, where you use a command called super. When you say super with parentheses um, in your child constructor, what that does is it calls the constructor of your parent class. And if you put parameters in the parentheses there, it'll call whatever constructor for your parent class matches that set of, par of parameters. Um, one thing that's really important to know about this syntax, though, is that this has to be the very first line of your child constructor. You can't do three or four things and then call super. You have to call super first, and then you can add whatever other code you need in order to tweak out your child class so that it works in its own particular way. A couple of other things you should think about when you're using inheritance with constructors. Make sure that your parent class includes at least one constructor without any parameters. Why is that important? Well, if you write a constructor for your child class that doesn't use the super command, it will, by default, call that parent constructor without parameters. And if you don't have one of those, you'll get a syntax error. So make sure you figure out some way to write a constructor for your parent class that doesn't take parameters. Just assign default values to your parameter to your class variables. Doesn't really matter what they are, even if you never think you're going to use them. Make sure that you have that um, for inheritance purposes. Okay, let's see a couple of examples of that. These are the examples that come with Chapter 10 in your book. Um, but just to kind of talk through, um, we use, they use a bank exa account example. That's one of the classic examples for inheritance, so we might as well take a look at it. Here we have a program with a savings account object and a checking account object. And they both inherit from the bank account class with slightly different behavior. Um, if we were to take a look at the bank account class, notice that it has a variable to hold its balance. It has a constructor with no parameters. And it has um, methods that can modify um, those uh, that class variable. And you'll see in another lesson, in order to modify that variable through uh, the child class, we're going to actually have to call these mutator methods in order to make that work. But taking a look at some of our inherited classes again, so we extend bank account, we can add more variables, that's fine. Um, notice that in our checking account constructor, we call super in order to assign this balance parameter to the class variable that's part of our bank account class. We have to do that in order for it to work. And the same thing essentially is true um, in our um, savings account constructor, except that, and it, I guess the assumption here is that savings accounts always start out with a zero balance. I'm not quite sure I would do that, but that's the way they do it. So since there's no need to modify that balance variable, we don't have to call super. Okay, so this has been a sort of, this is part one of our lesson on inheritance. In our next video, we'll take a look at some of the rules for overriding methods and using methods um, to modify our class variables. Uh, but in the meantime, we talked about what inheritance was. We talked about the difference between inheritance and using interfaces. We talked about how you can reuse your parents' methods, but not its variables. Um, and we also talked about some special syntax for writing child constructors and calling the constructors of your parent. All right, you're all set.